Shalom, all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, the Blind City Apostle GMS, this is Amna Allah, come next to the video. And um, I was thinking about doing a show, the show came to my mind to do last night. Um, And I was reading about an hour and change ago, an hour or so ago, and as I was reading, I'm like, you know what? Let me just put together this lesson and that scripture I was thinking about last night. And I was thinking about the scripture right here on, on in the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 28, because I was watching the video that the elder Manatee Zaka did. So I'm going to forget, but I forget the title of it. Something about sacrificing the truth. I forget exactly what it's called, but this is Luke chapter 14, verse 28. It says, for which of you were intending to build a tower? Now, a tower is something that's high, right? It's something that's high in, in the air. The reason why it's high is so that you can see your enemies coming from a distance. And the tower also has to be strong so that it can't be easily taken. For what are you intending to build a tower? Sit if not down first. So if you have that tower, right, you got to sit. It says, for which of you, as you can see my battery about to die. For which of you intending to build a tower, sit if not down first and count the course, whether he has sufficient to finish it. So when you build this this high strong tower, you gotta sit down. You gotta count the cost. I mean, you gotta calculate the cost, because if this tower is going to be high and strong. A lot of money has to be put into it. You know. A lot of labor has to take place, so a lot of money has to be put into it. And count the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. So you gotta sit down first, and you gotta count the cost. You gotta calculate how much it's gonna cost, whether you have enough money or enough manpower to finish this tower that you intend to build. Now, what Yahweh Shah is referencing to counting the cost is talking about counting the cost when you come into this truth. Just as before you build a tower, you sit down and count the cost, or you sit down and calculate, um, you sit down and you calculate your funds and um, what actually has to be done in order for this tower to be completed, then guess what? Same thing when you come into this truth, you got to sit down and you got to calculate, count, uh, count the cost or calculate the cost of what it is that you're sacrificing. Like when you're building a tower, there's a lot of money that's going to be, a lot of money and a lot of time got to be sacrificing to building that tower. So you got to sit down and you got to count the cost. Sit down and calculate exactly um, how much money and how much manpower is going to be needed to build it. Same thing with this truth. You got to sit down, you got to count the cost. You got to sit down and you got to calculate the cost. Calculate what it is that has to be sacrificed in order for you to maintain it in this to maintain this truth. Okay? What is it that you have to um have to what is it that uh, you have to do? And that's that's how you count the cost. You count the cost by uh taking into account um by taking into account exactly what it is that you have to do to maintain the faith all the way into the end. And part of um counting that cost in this truth it's the sacrifices you got to make. The trials and the tribulations that's going to come your way. That's going to try to deter you from um, keeping your eyes on the prize, so to speak. Alright? Less happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to fin finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. And that's exactly what will happen. If you laid the foundation that is tower that you're beginning to build, yet you're not able to finish it, Everybody's going to mock you. They're going to mock how you sat there and you laid the foundation for this great tower that you wanted to build. But you don't even have enough to finish building the entire building. They're going to look at you like a fool. Because you started um, this task, but you didn't take into account everything that had to be put in to building a tower. Just like when you come into this truth. You can't come into this truth at the foundation, the very beginning of your path in this truth, and then you fall out. You don't finish it. Everybody that's still in the truth is going to look at you and mock you. They're going to say, you wasn't the man of the Lord. You didn't count the cost. You didn't take into account what had to be sacrificed in order for you to um, stay in this truth. You didn't take into account that your family was going to come up against you, that your woman was going to leave you, that you might lose your job, you know? You get laid off. 
your friends going your so-called friends going to turn against you you got to go out there and you got to teach you got to study you got to have to sacrifice doing other things that you want to do so if you don't count that cost guess what when you come into the truth you're going to fall out when that tribulation comes your way you look man I ain't asked for this you ain't count the cost okay Saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. That's right. You began to build, you began to chew, but you wasn't able to finish. You began in a race that you wasn't able to complete it. Let's go to the next scripture. This is um Philippians chapter 3, verse 5. It says, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. It says, circumcised the eighth day, the eighth day. Of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. So Paul was very zealous of the law, he kept the laws, but what things were gained to me, those are kind of lost for your house shot. So all those things that were gained to him, he kind of lost for your house shot because, because the apostle Paul telling him he was circumcised the eighth day. That's in the law of the stock of Israel. He's an Israelite. At the tribe of Benjamin. And he was a Hebrew of Hebrews. Meaning that he was, he was a Hebrew that touching the law of blameless. I'm sorry. as touching the law of Pharisee. In other words, he was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was amongst the top of them. He was a Pharisee. He understood the law front and back. Okay? But he says, but those things, but what things were gained to me, those are kind of lost for you. I was shocked. And at one time, it was like a gain unto the Apostle Paul. Why was that? Very simple. Because the Apostle Paul, um, the Apostle Paul, being that he was a Pharisee, you know, he knew the laws, he kept the laws, he kept the, he kept the traditions of his father, of his father, he kept the traditions of his fathers, meaning of, of the Israelites that came before him, which is the law. And being that he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, and he was a Pharisee. He was looked at in high regard among the people. So that was like a gain unto him. He was looked at as a person of um, honor, a person of prestige. But he says, those are, but what things were gained to me, those are kind of lost for Yahweh Shah. He kind of those things as being lost for Yahweh Shah. Why is that? Because though he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews and a touch of the law of a Pharisee, and then he was a doctor of the law, um, touching the law of Pharisee, and he was blameless. He counted all those things at one time were gaining or gaining to him, but he counted those things lost for Yahweh Shah. Why? Because it really was like a hindrance unto him. And the reason why I say it was a hindrance because the scripture tell you the law is our schoolmaster to bring us unto Yahweh Shah. So though the Apostle Paul was a doctor of the law and was taught the law, was a doctor of the law, was taught the law, and also taught the law to others, he counted all those things lost unto Yahweh Shah because why? Yahweh Shah brought forth the righteousness of faith. Not the righteousness of the law. So him seeking to be justified by the works of the law was a hindrance unto him. So therefore he counted the laws to gain something much greater. Which is what? The righteousness of faith in Yahweh Shah. So he counted all those things lost. You can read about that, what I mentioned in Galatians the second chapter. Matter of fact, let me get that real This is the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahweh Shah. See that? Even we have believed in Yahweh Shah that we might be justified by the faith of Yahweh Shah and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So the Apostle Paul counted all those things lost that he would gain Yahweh Shah because gaining Yahweh Shah was much greater. All right? The justification of Yahweh Shah was far greater than the justification of the law or of seeking to be justified by the law. All right. Let me go back. This is Galatians three and eight. Yea, doubtless, and now I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Shah, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Yahweh Shah, because when Yahweh Shah is far greater than anything that we could lose. All right.
That's so you gotta you gotta count the cost. You gotta take into account everything it is that you're gonna lose in this world by gaining your hour shot. Everything you lost is not gonna compare to what it is that you're gonna get. That's how the scriptures speak in the book of Matthew, the 19th chapter. Yeah, how Shah said everything, those who have taken forsaken wives and lands and so forth are gonna receive a hundredfold. We're gonna receive far greater than everything we forsook. Verse 9. And be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is the law. See that? Be found in him not having my own righteousness, own righteousness, which is the law. That's why when I went to verse 7 of Philippians 3rd chapter, where it said, But what things are gained to me, those are kind of lost for you, Shah. The things that were gained to him, he kind of lost something, how Shah. Why? Because it says, And be found in him, and I have my own righteousness, which is the law. So what it was gained unto him, though he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, that's touching the law of a Pharisee, all right? He wanted to be found in Yahweh Shah, not having his own righteousness, own righteousness, which is the law. But he counted those things lost. Why? Because he said, But that which is through the faith of Yahweh Shah, the righteousness was to the most high by faith. So I'm read that again, verse 9. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is the law. That's why um he counted those things all lost. Because the law was a gain unto him at one time, but he counted it lost. Okay? Because it wasn't about having his own righteousness, which is the law, continuing on, but that which is through the faith of Yahweh Shah, that's the righteousness that he sought. So he counted those things lost for Yahweh Shah. The righteousness which is of the Most High by faith, okay? So he sort of be found in Yahweh Shah, not having his own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Yahweh Shah, the righteousness which is through the faith of Yahweh Shah, the righteousness which is of the Most High by faith. See that? That I may know him in the power of his, of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Right. We have fellowship in Yahweh Shah's sufferings. We're, we're suffering this as Yahweh Shah suffered. Get a word conformable. Strong's G 4833. Sumar Fidzo. Sumar Fidzo. Sumar Fidzo. To be conformed to. Receive the same form as. So when it says um. That I may know him in the power of his, of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Be made conformable unto his death. Okay. Doesn't really give you much there. But we receive the same as Yahweh Shah. Meaning we the same sufferings. That's good right there. Let's go to the next scripture. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 29. No, Matthew, chapter 19, verse 27. And the scripture says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, talking to Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? So we don't forsake everything, man. This is what the apostle, this is what Peter is saying. He's saying, We forsake, we, we, we forsake everything, Lord. I'm saying to y'all, we, we, we just took everything, man, like, you know, you know, this is what we done gave up. Everything. But it's truth. But Peter's saying, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have there for? In other words, what are we going to get? We're giving the bullet stuff. What are we going to get in return? And Yahweh shall say unto them, verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, meaning the reincarnation, when a son of man shall visit, shall, I'm sorry, shall sit in the throne of his glory, he shall also sit upon twelve thrones just in the twelve tribes of Israel. So the same one that sat upon, the same ones that followed Yahweh Shah in the reincarnation, when Yahweh Shah comes back in this time and sets up the kingdom, they will be sitting on twelve thrones just in the twelve tribes of Israel. And that's talking about the twelve disciples. Okay? And everyone that have forsaken homes, but but the rest of us too gonna to be sitting on thrones as well. Low willing with the elect. And everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. So we're going to receive hundreds upon hundreds of times greater than what it is that we lost. And if you notice, it didn't say those are forsaken husband, because the Most High ain't looking for women. He's looking for men. All right? The Most High deals with men. Last scripture. So that's all counting the course. Uh, uh, Peter was counting the cost. He mentioned what he forsook. So he knew what it was. 
He calculated what it was that he was losing. But he wanted to understand, to understand what it was that he was going to gain for all the things that he lost. So you got to count the cause. You got to count, to, to take into account, calculate, take into account everything that you're, lo that you're losing. Okay? Everything that you got to give up to a, to a, um, receive the prize that you're hoping to acquire. Or just, a, or just to ha having everything that you lost and getting it back a hundredfold and ultimately receiving eternal life. Being delivered out of this um, wicked kingdom, Babylon the Great, which is America, that's going to be destroyed by way of thermonuclear destruction in the coming Third World War, as found in the scripture, in the scriptures. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. See? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Most High, which is a reasonable service. Okay? That's what we got to do. Prevent our bodies as a living sacrifice. Counting the cost. Okay? Wholly acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. And that's part of counting the cost, presenting your body as living sacrifice. Let's go to that. Let's go there. So that word sacrifice. Zao. Strong's G, 2198. Zao. 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 Now I don't really tell you nothing when you go here. It says um Let me show into the right word. I want the word living, excuse me. Sacrifice. That's what I'm meant to go to. Strong's G twenty three seventy eight. Tusia. 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 It doesn't say anything here, really. To act or to act or the victim, literally or figuratively, sacrifice, a sacrifice victim. But when you go here, it says metaphorically, of the body of the believer, presented to the Most High as a living sacrifice. So our bodies are being presented to the Most High as a living sacrifice. So we aren't actually dying physically, but our bodies are presented as sacrifices while we're living, because we continually putting our lives on the line and we're losing our lives right that we would gain Yahweh Shah didn't that's Yahweh Shah say that those that lost their lives gonna gain it that's what happens when you present yourself as a living sacrifice those that find their lives shall lose it and those that lose their lives shall find it ain't that written okay and that's our reasonable service so with that, I'm going to close. You see my battery dying. I'm, I'm going to say I hope I've learned something. And I'm going to say Shalom.